We're nearby Sedona today for a stop to Montezuma National Monument. Yes. Is it called Montezuma's Castle? We're here in Arizona today for a stop at Montezuma's Castle National Monument. I think so. Yes. Let's go check it out. <laughs> okay. One of the things that we did do was the national and state park sites near Sedona. The first one we're going to kick off with is Montezuma Castle National Monument, and that is located in Camp Verde, Arizona which is where our uh, trailer was at. Montezuma Castle is the third national monument dedicated to preserving the ancient living spaces of the Sinagua Indians. The national monument was established in 1906. There's a parking area, it's kind of tight, but you walk in, they have the check-in site where you pay your fees, the park rangers are there, and it's a self-guided tour. It's not long at all. It's just about a third of a mile. And you walk along this sycamore grove. And as you're walking in, you look up towards this hillside or cliff area. And you can see this magnificent structure built in to the side of this wall. It is 20 rooms with five stories to it. It looks like the most unusual condo you ever saw in your life. And literally, it's built in to this cliff. The cliff is uh, limestone. Limestone is very soft rock. So they dug into this rock and started constructing this housing for the Native Americans there. Yeah, and I forget how old they said that they think this is, but I'm I'm, oh. I'm thinking it was like 700, 800 ish years old, yeah, roughly, least, right? Yeah. They had pictures yeah, yeah. of how they entered it because there's only one way to get into this structure and that's through a ladder. Mm -hmm. And the structure itself had partially been reconstructed because over time, of course, some of it had crumbled away. Um, there's also many structures below that that um, are gone, but you can see the foundations of those structures below. And it was absolutely fascinating. There's a rendition of what it looked like. Mm -hmm. It was a fire, so this was a little more extensive. Mm. Um, so the fire took out some of the wood beams. Um, but there's a, a artist rendition down below. I took a picture of it. The part that survives to this day, the Indians used a stone and mortar system to create this amazing dwelling. And it is estimated that the castle took over three centuries to fully complete. That is a very, very long time. It was a form of shelter from flooding. The path is flat along the Sycamore Grove and it is fed by Beaver Creek, which is one of the few perennial streams in Arizona. This is the creek that also floods and they had many, many crops that were devastated by flooding from this creek. Okay, so it is called Montezuma's Castle. And you may think that maybe the Aztec, Montezuma, had actually been there. He has not. There is no connection to the Aztec Emperor Montezuma for which the site is named. And we're back. And we're back from Montezuma Castle. What are your thoughts? It was incredible. It was, the structure itself was amazing. Mm -hmm. I think this trip, this is the first time that I've been to, probably you too, these Indian dwellings in the hills. So yeah. I've seen them, I mean, through the years and the decades. So between what we saw at Tuzigut National Monument here, and I think we're off to one more. Yeah. It's nice to finally be able to see them. For me, the thing that really impresses me is you think about hundreds, almost a thousand years ago, the um, what it would have taken to build these things. Mm -hmm. Just amazing, mind-blowing. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, Out of necessity. I mean, they were... Um, looking to survive. They were looking for ways to eat. They needed water source. Shelter. And they need shelter. And yep. this, this is what they came up with. And it's, it's pretty amazing. Apparently the first condos in America, right? Oh. I think. Yes. yes. But you have to, you have to climb a ladder. Yes. <laughs> what the old people did. What? I wonder if the older people lived on the bottom floors. 
or they because if you're if you're disabled because they were disabled then too they probably took care of their disabled off to the next adventure we did spend about an hour at montezuma castle and on the way out to our next site we stumbled upon this place that that was called the apache fry bread stand and it was just kind of this this stand-up thing in this dirt parking lot but there was a lady there who was taking the money and she had beadwork for sale mm-hmm. and yeah, it's handmade beadwork and some other handmade crafts necklaces right? yeah. bracelets and the gentleman who was working the kitcheny thing was making apache fry bread so i had to stop in my quest to eat Native American foods made by Native Americans. Here was my opportunity. So they were serving this fry bread with, there was like four different types of toppings you could select from. We selected fry bread with honey, but I did get my Native American taste. All right, so just yesterday, I was commenting on how I don't seem to be able to find any Native American, American Indian, whatever the correct way is to call it, food, restaurants. And then coming out of Montezuma Castle, there was a roadside couple of people who were selling fry bread, and they're from one of the tribes here. Apache. So this is our first ever Native American made food. Now, I have to say, I saw him Whoa. lay it over something and there's there's something definitely that was a ball like shape that he laid it over that made this metal very thin hmm. um so i don't i don't know i was trying to peek at it but it was yeah. so far at low i couldn't get to it but so they had um it was a, is it a special way of making yeah. it apparently so we we chose honey okay here you go here we go, here we go. fry bread mm. apache style Okay, it is different. Now, he said that usually the Native Americans use um, bluebird. Flower. Flour. But he said that he didn't like it because it was such a fine flour that he had trouble working with it. So he's just using all-purpose. Gold metal. But it's still different. Mm-hmm. So, taste away, baby. Me next. Here we go. Right, so for me, I kind of... It almost struck me as like something that you could have for breakfast, like with the honey on it, kind of like a pancake alternative. I guess maybe. All the toppings were sweet, I think. Most of them, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I enjoyed. It's very good. There needs to be more American Indian food for purchase. It's a well, niche that people can get into. Yeah, but kudos to them for putting out. They're there like all day long, they said. Every day of the year, Every they day. said. Yep. Unless it's raining yeah, and they yeah, pack it up. Yeah. All right, there we go. Mm-hmm. Fry bread. <laughs>